many celebrities does she know? It's a little spoon. I decided to wear it to the wedding or not. Spoiler alert, I did not. <laughs> Here it is. I have been catfished. And I was just like. <laughs> Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. We're testing the TikTok ads today. And by that, I mean, you know when you're scrolling through TikTok, an ad will pop up and I thought, you know what? I will buy one of those things and try it in a video. Because some of them, I swear to God, will not leave me alone until I have visited that website and bought something from it. And even then, they're still popping up as ads. Oh, and by the way, if you're wondering what my lip color is, because I don't usually wear red lips, this is the Fenty Beauty Zesty Bestie Poutsicle, which is one of like the lip stains where you can leave it glossy like this or wipe it off and it's a stain. I just felt like doing something a bit different today. And let's just get into the video. Okay, so the first ad that I'm going to be testing from this video is from a skincare brand, a very, very bougie skincare brand called Tarcha or Tatcha, I think it's Tatcha. I had two of these ads and it was basically saying that Tatcha is now available in the UK because we didn't have it that easily accessible before. And the first ad is this one, Ooh. which Don't I will on the screen. The Tatcha Dewy Skin Cream has just hit the UK. It's the best hydrating moisturizer. Every celebrity I know uses it. It's magic in a tub. Every celebrity she knows uses it. How many celebrities does she know? Then they also posted another ad, which was by a user called Miss Callie Jane, but they were sort of boosted by the brand as an ad, and then you could shop the products at the beginning. Sometimes brands do that where they will sort of like purchase the rights of the video off you to then use it as an ad. This one in particular hooked me in because her skin looked bloody amazing. Guys, I am so buzzing to tell you that Tatcha have finally launched in the UK. How is created in the Tokyo Institute with Japanese fermented superfoods and I'm going to show you my two favourites. Okay, so this is the Dewy Skin Cream. It is packed with antioxidants. It's made with Japanese purple rice and look at this gorgeous little gold spoon you get in the top to apply it to your face. I'm going to show you now. No way. Guys, I'm going to be real with you. I knew that this was one of the products because I'd written it down that I wanted to test from the TikTok ads. I didn't go and re-watch the video before I filmed the clips of me applying this. That has just blown my mind. I thought this was part of the packaging. Apparently, it's a little spoon. What? That is genius. I thought it was like a little bow on top. So I didn't use the little scoopy spoon in my little segment where I was testing this, but just so you know. So she's testing both the Tatcha Dewy Skin Cream and also the Water Cream. They both have absolutely beautiful packaging. I've just got to say, I was sent these. Not, not to be included in this video. This is not a sponsored ad. Tatcha have no idea that I'm featuring them in this video, but because I was sent them in PR, I thought, you know what? I may as well test them. But to purchase these, I believe they are 63 or 64 pounds each, which which is a hell of a lot of money for a face cream. It's not quite on the levels of La Mer, which is like a hundred and whatever it was. You do get 50 mil in these and the packaging is beautiful. I do love it. I think they look so stunning. I will insert me from the past about two hours ago, setting up to film this video and here are my thoughts. And I've just washed my face, so I've got nothing on it at the moment. And I will include a few little close-ups, but you can even see like on the front camera that probably here, I've got an area of dry skin, like a few little flaky bits. And also on my cheek here, like at the bottom, there's an area of dryness here. I have a little bit on the side of my head. Basically, whenever I have eczema flare-ups, they tend to be sort of on my cheeks, on my forehead, and like round the sides of my face, which is kind of random. And maybe that's to do with like the hair products I use or something. I'm not really sure. I do have oily skin naturally, but then because of my eczema, I get dry patches. And this one, the Lightweight Hydration Pore Refining Cream is supposed to be good for sort of oily combo skin. And the Dewy Skin Cream is supposed to be good for dry skin. I have both. And in that ad, the girl seemed to put this one on first and then she put on this one. But I'm gonna give the Dewy Skin Cream a try first because this is the one that I've seen the most hype over, to be honest. So let's just take a little... <gasps> smells kind of cucumbery. Smells very fresh. So weirdly at the moment, the driest patches of my skin are on this side of my face. So on that side of my face, I'm gonna use this dewy skin cream. It smells kind of spa-like. Oh wow, Ooh, this does feel very moisturizing. Get it all up in that patch of dry skin. I've got to say, I do tend to avoid products that have an overly sort of floral fragrance just because usually I find that they kind of irritate my skin a bit, whether or not they've got something that I'm allergic to or not. Sometimes I just find that intense sort of fragrances can sting my skin a little bit. This one is tingling a little bit, but obviously I do have like the sort of open eczema bits here, but that is very glowy. I mean, look at the difference in my skin. I'm actually just going to take an extra little bit on those particularly dry 
areas. I can see why this would make a good base for your makeup if you do have dry skin. It doesn't really feel oily, it more just feels smooth and soft and it's got a bit of a slip to it but it's not kind of oil slick. Okay, let's try the water cream on the other side where I'm not quite as dry. I would imagine I will probably end up going in with the dewy cream over both of them but this one's texture is very different. It's not purple, it's white and it does look a bit thinner. This one also smells kind of cucumbery. I don't know if it's cucumber that I'm thinking of, it just smells sort of like plants. Okay, so let's blend this one in. Okay, wow, yeah, this one is a lot thinner in terms of the texture. Feels a lot less oily, feels more, I was gonna say feels more watery, which is what it is. Mm, that's weird, as you're kind of blending it into the skin, it feels like it sort of melts between your fingers a bit and turns into more of a watery consistency. This one is sinking in a lot more. It feels like my skin is just going and this one's got more of like a tacky finish. This one's got more of like a slippery finish. It said it was pore refining. I'm not really seeing that at the moment. But let me just give you a close up of both sides of my face. So after about 10 minutes for this to sink into my skin properly, it has actually really reduced the dry patches. It's not got rid of them completely because obviously I need to exfoliate my skin, but I don't want to over exfoliate it because then it just sort of starts the cycle again. If I get off all of the dry bits, it then will get sore and irritated and get dry bits again. But it has actually done a really good job at sort of softening the skin skin especially on this little patch here i think now my makeup is going to sit so much better over the top of this even though this one is thinner in terms of the consistency it still gives a nice amount of glow and it feels really nice actually this one really feels like it's sort of sunk in and this one feels like it's got a lot like it's thicker this side both of them feel really nice but i've got to say it feels lovely like i can see why this would be such a nice base for makeup and this side as well if you have oilier skin however i am going to go in with the dewy skin cream and put it all over my face I feel like a Charlotte Tilbury model. <laughs> so overall, I do like them and I will continue to use them, but would I repurchase them? Probably not, not for 63 quid. I'm gonna go do my makeup and I'll come back with my makeup done and we'll see how my makeup applies over the top of it. I'm sure it's gonna be fine. I just thought I might as well film this little bit while I'm getting ready, just a little clip, but I've decided to use the Catrice foundation because before I found this a bit too matte. So we're gonna see how it blends with these as my base. Okay, well, yeah, it's definitely blending a lot easier with this as my base. Also, it's actually only one of the only foundations that I've got that matches me when I don't have tan on. As you can see, this is now incredibly glowy. Having that moisturizer on underneath has completely transformed this foundation for something that was quite thick and matte before to blending a lot easier and also looking a lot more glowy. So if you do have dry skin, this has helped significantly to sort of like hydrate my face and make my makeup look a lot smoother, but it's not a miracle cure. You can still see a little bit of the dryness coming through just in those patches where I had, but it looks a hell of a lot better than it would have done if I hadn't have used moisturizer. You can still see a little bit of dry is here and just here as well. I'm gonna do the rest of my makeup and then I'll be back for the rest of the video. So the next product that I got quite a few ads for is a brand called Bear, which are a razor company, which I had never heard of before. I think they're pretty new. So it's basically a razor subscription service and I think it is targeted towards women, but obviously you can use it if you are, however you identify, it's literally just a razor. And the reason why I went for this is because they had a really good introductory offer. So when you signed up, you got the razor, two blades, a little wall holder for £2.95, which is so much cheaper than any razors that I tend to buy anyway. And I also purchased the Bare Shaving Gel as well because it was £4 and I thought I may as well try that too. And the delivery was free. So it came to £6.95 for the handle, two blades which come in there, obviously one of them is attached to this, the little wall holder, shower holder bit, and the shave gel, which is incredibly good. You can choose whether you want it every two months, every three months, or every four months. And it says each new five blade razor cartridge is just £2.49 and we'll send them in packs of six. So I chose for the every four month option because I tend to find that with razor blades, I know that you're supposed to replace them like, I don't know, every week or something or every two weeks or once a month or I've got no idea how often you're actually supposed to replace your razor blades. I just use them until they go blunt. I have been testing this razor out for the past month. The razor that I was previously using was from Estrid and I've got to say, I love my Estrid razor. I've had it for over a year now and the handle is starting to go a little bit sort of like worn away. But other than that, I love it and I love the blades. They last for ages before they go blunt and they give me a really good shave. Really like it. And I thought this one looked very kind of similar in terms of the style and I will say good points about this is very affordable in terms of the introductory offer I like the handle it's got a really nice grip this bit is sort of like ridged and also like a silicone kind of material it feels very ergonomic is that the right way to say it you get a really nice good grip it doesn't feel like it's gonna slip out of my hands it's very easy to change the blades you literally just like click that up and then like click them 
back in again. I like that it's convenient, they obviously send it to you and you can sign up and you can cancel whenever you want to. So those are the good things. However, I have got to say, I have noticed that the blades go blunt significantly quicker than my Astrid one, which obviously these are a smaller business. I think they're more of a startup. And so I want to give sort of like my honest feedback. I do find that the razor blades go blunt more quickly than other razors that I've previously had. And I did get a very, very nice close shave with it the first sort of like two times that I shaved with this. And it does have a bit of like a sticky um, stuff that comes off from around the edges, which only really lasts for like the first shave to like give a bit of extra lube. I guess to be fair to them, it does say on the website that you should replace your razor blade like every like week to two weeks. So that does make sense. And I would say it lasts that amount of time. But like I said, with other razors that I've tried in the past, they will go for like a month or two before I need to replace them. I have only been using it for a month and I've already had to change to the second blade in the pack. So that is a downside. However, the replacement cartridges are cheaper than if you buy them in a supermarket. And the shaving gel, I've got to say, this works pretty well on dry skin, but actually in the shower, it's like a really interesting kind of texture. It's sort of like a hair gel type texture. It's like a jelly. Like, I don't know if you can see, like it's a really weird texture. And weirdly, it doesn't seem to mix well with water. So using it in the shower, I found that it was just sort of like squeaking along my legs. Do you get what I mean? Yesterday though, I decided to shave my legs out of the shower before I got in, just on like my bare skin. Use this gel and it worked really well on my dry legs. Those are my honest thoughts and hopefully it's kind of like constructive criticism rather than me being like, it's shit. Because <laughs> it's not shit. It's just not as good as my other uh, razors that I've previously tried. The next thing that I got an ad for, which was maybe one of the best ads that I've seen in a while. Because it really really got me interested. I kid you guys not. I saw a video on here. I'm sure you guys saw it too, actually, where this girl was walking down the street and this guy stopped her and was like, what perfume are you wearing? And she says, it's a Glossier one. And I was looking through the comments and all the comments are saying, yeah, for some reason, men love the Glossier perfume. And I was like, this is my time to shine because my boyfriend doesn't like the smell of any perfumes ever. And I genuinely have so much perfume, he doesn't like a single one. So I thought I'd do like a little scientific experiment to see if he'd like it. So I got the perfume and I just wore it randomly one day and I walked through the door. And when he saw me, he said word for word, that is the best scent I have ever smelled in my entire life. I had never bought a Glossier product in my life. But when I tell you that this man was practically on his hands and knees praising this perfume and it's so strange because i don't not like the smell but it's not like any crazy smell to me but this perfume there's something about it so yeah if you want men absolutely flocking to you glossier perfume that is enough to sell it to me. So I went to Covent Garden the other day. They have a Glossier store there. Really weird store, by the way. You have to queue up to get into it. I was walking around and I was like, how the hell do you buy anything? There's no like desk. I went up to one of the workers there. They're wearing these sort of like pink Glossier jumpsuits. And she was like, oh, you just do it here. And she had an iPad. And then she was like, okay, if you just go through to that room over there, somebody will call your name. There's a lady stood in a lab coat behind this desk. And I can see in the background, there's a conveyor belt going down from like some stairs I think it's their stock room and I think what happens is there's people down there that will receive the order they package up your order into a bag they hook it onto this conveyor belt and it comes up and it's got your name on it and then the lady goes Sophie and I was like yeah that's me and then you go and pick it up it was really weird but also kind of really cool but it came in one of the glossier sort of bubble wrap pouches which are kind of weird it had a little sticker that came with it and then the perfume itself this cost 49 pounds by the way so it is quite expensive 50 mil and then you have this little silicone thing and then it opens just like this i really like the bottle actually i think it's really cool it's an edp so it's an eau de parfum which means that it will last should last a little bit longer on your skin i sprayed this on the day that i got it because i was going to meet my friend Adam for a Starbucks and I was really sweaty. It was really hot in London. So I saw him walking towards me and I was just like and sprayed it all over myself. And it actually lasted really well. By the time I got home, I could still smell it like on my wrists. When you first spray it, it is quite strong and it is definitely not the type of perfume that I would usually go for. My first initial thoughts is that it's quite a woody scent, which I tend to go for stuff that's sort of like sweet, maybe like a bit of floral and sweet, but this one has got a very woody scent to it, in my opinion. It says you first smell the pink pepper, bright, sparkling, spicy top note that makes a good first impression. It definitely has a spicy element to it. Then you get into the wood Woodsy, slightly sweet heart of the scent that comes from ambrette seeds and warm ambery ambrox, whatever the hell those are. It's balanced with iris, a white floral for a creamy freshness. It says mostly it smells like you, soft, warm, and familiar. I do agree with that. To me, it's a 
very comforting kind of smell and I'm not too sure why that is. But yeah, if you're into like super sweet fragrances, it's probably not gonna be one for you and it's not what I would usually go for. However, I do like it. I'm gonna get James to come up here and sniff me and be like, what do you think? Cause he is a fragrance guru. Oh, oh my God. That is actually such a cute design idea. It says, was created in house with a real thumbprint indent, much like the fragrance, it needs you to complete it. So you put your thumb here and then you can spray it. That's genius. Hello. Hello. Please can you come upstairs and smell me? What a weird request. <laughs> <laughs> what? And I need your um, opinion. Right, okay, I'll, give it, I'll come up and give you a whiff. <laughs> I can smell it from here. I've sprayed quite a lot of it. Sprayed a lot? And smell it from my neck. <laughs> it, I literally do- Oh! oh. oh. Oh, right in the eyebrow. <laughs> it's like a bit floral, a bit, a little bit like sort of peppery. Peppery, that's the main note. The top Look note at is, that. the top note is pink pepper. But, but what do you think of it? Because the girl in the ad was saying that her boyfriend usually hates every perfume. And she was like, oh, he came home and was like, what are you wearing? You smell amazing. I think. Would you smell it and be like, you smell amazing? Smell it and think you smell nice. I wouldn't say that it's the best one that you own. Mm. That's definitely. It's quite woody, isn't it? Yeah, woody, peppery. Um, it's a little bit floral as well, but I mean. <sighs> Heavy dog. Hello. Thank you. Oh, oh, I love you so much, Pinky. You make life so much better. It smells nice, but it's not the best perfume that I own. And I would agree with him. So the final ad that will not leave me alone, that is for Cider, the clothing company Cider. Their designs on their website and in their TikToks and everything just look so nice, so cute. It's really affordable. So I was very skeptical. So I actually ordered from them ages ago with the intention of wearing one of the dresses to a wedding. However, I will show you that dress in a minute and we can judge whether or not I decided to wear it to the wedding or not. Spoiler alert, I did not. <laughs> I spent 70 pounds and I ended up getting three items, no, four items for 70 quid, which is pretty good. I got a top, which was 12 pounds, a dress, which was 27, a green floral dress, another dress that was 22, and then another dress that was 22. There was a promotional discount. I think there was like an introductory offer. Shipping was actually free. I didn't have to pay any customs on the shipping or anything, which is great. I ordered it on the 21st of June. My order arrived on the 2nd of July. And also something that I actually did get an email update is that one of the dresses that I had was on sort of pre-order and with some of their clothes which is a system that I do actually quite like they have a sort of pre-order system where supposedly they will get in orders for a particular item and then they will make them so that they don't have loads of excess stock but that was only on a few items so I'm not really sure how that works it says they celebrate smart fashion we develop the ability to adjust our production in real time by looking at direct feedback and data from our community, we're able to only produce what we know will sell. That way we don't have to raise our prices to cover for the losses of unsold stock. Ever wonder why we're so affordable? The more you know. Okay, so that kind of makes sense. But also as well, it said that it was gonna be sort of like good quality stuff and it was very cheap, so I'm very skeptical. And when my stuff arrived, it's very mixed. I got everything in a size small. And the first thing that I got is a top. Oh my God. Okay, the first thing I got is this top. Here it is. Everything came so screwed up. So we're not off to a good start with this one when I opened this first, cause I was like, on the website, I'll put a picture of what it looked like. I have been catfished. Okay, technically it is the same top. However, I thought when it was described as a corset top that it would have this sort of corset boning on it, which is what it looks like on the website. But when it's arrived, it is completely just, like there's no structure to it. It is not a corset top. It's designed to look like a corset top. And I really loved it on the website. I love the tie design, but even like the cup, there's no cups, there's no boning underneath them. It's literally just stitched uh, into the shape of a cup. And then it has this zip on the back of it. But overall, it is just so flimsy. There's no structure to it whatsoever. And also as well, it's quite big for me. I mean, fair enough, I don't have the boobs to fill it, but I was thinking that it would fit judging by the measurements on their website. The stitching is wonky and places there's sort of like threads hanging off it in quite a few different places this was really bad like if you look at that that hem is completely wonky it's not even straight i was really disappointed with this one it's just awful <laughs> Also, I tied the straps to how like tight I would want them for standing up. But as soon as you sort of like slouch your shoulders or sit down, it just falls off. <laughs> I think even if it was tighter and it actually fit properly, it still would just look like so flimsy. Because even if this was tight to my skin 
as soon as I sit down, that bit will just flap up because it's just not got any actual structure to it. It just doesn't, it just doesn't work. So the next dress, which is the one that was the most expensive out of all of them, this is my favorite thing that I ordered. And I do actually really like this. I think it is very pretty, but the material is very strange. Overall, it does look more green because of the green flowers. I don't know if you can hear. Let me just try and see if you can hear the material. To me, it feels like the material of like, I don't know, like an umbrella or like a parachute or something. Like it's a really odd material that I've not experienced before in a dress and it's quite thin. This dress looks beautiful on the website and the shoulders of this one do actually fit quite well. This is the one that fits the best out of all of them. It does have a concealed zip down the back, which is nice. The zip on this one is much nicer than the corset top um, and it's a lot smoother. The thing I don't like about this dress is that the bit in the middle, like the little keyhole bit is off to one side and I don't know why that is. This dress I will wear. I'm going to take it on holiday. It is very comfortable and it didn't arrive horrendously screwed up, which is great. Like, why does this... It starts in the middle here and then goes diagonal. Like, that's not... That's not the middle of the dress. The middle is here. It's just been stitched wrong because if you see where it goes up here and then down. Other than that, I do like this one. I think it, it can work. It's cute. It fits nicely. It's a lot more sort of flattering. But it's still a bit of a funny material. I mean, once that bit's tied up, you can't really see that it's wonky because it's not like gaping open, but that just annoys me. The next dress is actually one that I did take to France with me and I did wear it. So it's a blue one. Again, it's got the same kind of concealed zip. Again, I will post pictures of what it looks like on the website, but this one did also come up a little bit big and I ended up having to adjust the straps because when I first tried it on, um, I do have quite a short torso. The straps were too long, so I did take the straps up a little bit. I just put like a couple of stitches in the back and I do actually like this dress. It is a little bit see-through, so I wore it with nude underwear and it wasn't really a problem. And I wore this on holiday in France. It's got a slit down the side and it's another midi dress. It's a similar kind of material to the other one, but it's a bit more floaty. I do actually like this dress as well. It wasn't a complete fail, but also again, it's not the best made dress. Shocker, I know. Okay, so this one was probably my favorite out of all of them. But again, the straps were kind of weird, so I ended up having to stitch them so that they're a bit shorter, but they kind of sit on the edges of your shoulders, which again, when you then go to sit down, they kept sort of like dropping off. And it's not supposed to be an off the shoulder one. On the website, it's pictured with the sleeve sort of here. But I do actually like this one. This one fits the best, and I would say is the most kind of like true to size. Um, again, it's got the zip sort of down the back and it does have the slit and I'm wearing black underwear which I'm pretty sure you can see through it. This lighting is not particularly flattering but overall this one was probably my favourite out of the things that I got. And then the last one, this is the dress that I bought to wear to somebody's wedding and it's just a mess. It arrived, not only is it way too big, like the top of this, um, it's, it's just a lot, comes up a lot bigger than the others. The zip on this one is also fine, it's just down the side here. Oh, now I say that, the zip's getting a bit stuck. This kind of satin material, it came so incredibly screwed up. It does have adjustable straps, but it's just a midi dress. But can you see how screwed up this arrived? And it does also have some buttons down the side, if I can just show you. One of my best friends actually ordered the same dress as this, but in pink for her sister's wedding. And when she said to me, oh yeah, I've ordered a dress from Cider and she showed me a picture. I was like, ah, I have that dress in blue and it was pretty bad. And I just messaged her now and I was like, how was your dress from Cider? She was like completely see-through, Sending it back. On the website, it looks so much nicer than it is in person. And also, again, like the stitching of it, like they're just not very well made. And then this is the last one. The fit of it is really weird. It's really tight around like the stomach and hips. And so I'd have to sort of wear it like hoiked up a bit. This part is just really big. And also, it's not sort of like these bits just don't, they don't fall right. On the website, it said it was a cow neck, but it just doesn't sort of. It just is a no, like it just doesn't. And so yeah, it's really tight across the belly. So if I'm to wear it where it's supposed to go, it's really unflattering. <laughs> but then the bottom of it is just so flowy that it just looks really odd. And I'm not sure what body type this would sort of flatter, unless you were to sort of pull it up and maybe like tuck it like this tuck it underneath 
somehow or maybe even like belt it or something i don't know it's just not it <laughs> so realistically overall would i recommend ordering from cider no the stuff looks a lot nicer on the website i wouldn't really recommend it to be honest it's all very cheaply made stuff i don't think it's gonna last me a particularly long time those dresses are pretty and i will be wearing them very strange website incredibly mixed so that has been me testing more tiktok ads if you like this kind of video please give this a thumbs up let me know if there's anything else that you've been getting loads of ads for on tiktok that won't leave you alone i'm sure cider will be one of them for a lot of people i hope this video was helpful and if you guys like this kind of thing maybe you might want to subscribe you could do if you want to no pressure and i hope you guys are good and i will see you in my next video bye